I'm Nate Lind, and I help people interested in buying or selling online businesses get the transaction done without the deal falling apart. If you're looking to buy or sell online businesses, then be sure to keep tuning in for more videos like this one. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications about new videos and interviews. And introduce yourself in the comments. Are you a buyer or a seller? Enjoy the interview. Hey everybody, Nate Lind here. I have Travis Gomez from Cambridge Commerce. Travis, I've known for many, many years. He is a payment processing expert. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, a variety of different insider secrets to payment processing. So for anybody out there who has an online business that's accepting credit card payments, this one's for you. Travis, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Give us some of your background and let's, uh, let's dive right into it. I understand you got a little bit of presentation you can share with us. Yeah, sure, thanks. Uh, Nate, again, I appreciate it, man. We've known each other for a long time. Uh, a lot of direct response, uh, internet marketing conferences over the years, and uh, really enjoyed spending time with you and what you've been contributing actually to, to the online community. So thank you for that. Um, for myself, yeah, I've been with Cambridge Commerce, oh, gosh, I think this is like 20 years for me now. And, uh, you know, in the payment space, uh, there's a lot of aspects to it. I've learned a lot from being uh, with the same company for such a long time. You know, I started as basically an intern out of college. And uh, I've gone through, you know, kind of doing some of the support work, going into like underwriting, risk management, um, business development. So I've really seen most aspects of the payment processing business. And, um, you know, I, there's, there's a lot of complexity to it. Uh, there's sometimes a lot of complexity to it. And one of the things that I really enjoy is, um, you know, I'm constantly learning new things about what's available, what's the opportunity, how to solve complex challenges for clients. And, you know, I think it's, it's, and we come in internally in our office many times, like we're always learning new things and we're dedicated to the space full time. Right. And so when your business is not dedicated to payment processing, how can you stay on top of all the things that you're supposed to know? It's just impossible, right? There's, there's so many aspects to running a business. Well, compliance, um, you know, what tools and technology and things are out there and, and how do you implement them and implement them effectively? And, you know, many things are out there that just don't get done well or properly. And you just don't know what you're missing or, or how to do it because you're busy running a business. You're busy focusing on your marketing. You're business, busy focusing on operations, profitability, employees, all the things that steal your time and attention to manage. So um, that's one of the things that I actually really enjoy about Cambridge is that we're able to come alongside a merchant help them watch out for things that nobody's telling them to look out for, giving them insights and advice on what challenges that they're facing and how to solve them specifically. And so that's, it's actually one of the things that it, um, I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys and your audience here today is solving some of the challenges when it comes to payment processing, specifically on Shopify platform, you know, some of the tools that are available. It's such a good platform, easy to throw, throw up a story, get moving, drive marketing. But there's some downsides uh, to using that system. And, you know, if you get complacent, uh, it's easy to miss opportunities that are right in front of you. And so those are the things that I wanted to kind of share today yeah, um, with you guys. Absolutely. You know, for those of you that uh, you have any sales off of Amazon, you know, or, or those other marketplaces that handle the payments for you, this is critical because some, your money is in someone else's hands uh, until the very last moment it actually hits your bank account. Uh, so I, I have had some painful experiences with that, not knowing the, uh, the system, not knowing the rules. Um, so Travis, go ahead and uh, share your screen. I'd love to uh, take us in on the inside of a payment processing Fantastic. expert. Yeah, you got it. All right. Okay. Move that off here. All right. So uh, again, thanks again, Nate. And so today what I want to run through is, um, you know, kind of give you guys a little bit of my background. Um, a lot of people think of payment processing like um, banks or, you know, a financial institution of some sort. And, you know, it's very easy to think of them in those terms um, because on some level they're looking at risk, you know, and, and a bank's main job is to min manage and mitigate risk. That's, that's really what underwriters do. That's really what risk managers do. And so when it comes to uh, payment processing, it's very easy for people to think in those terms. Um, one of the things that I like to do is uh, share with people a little bit of a paradigm shift when it comes to payment processing. And instead of thinking of them like a bank, um, I think it's actually more helpful to think of them in terms of McDonald's. And what I mean by that is um, McDonald's, everybody thinks McDonald's business is to sell hamburgers. 
but actually their business is to write the rules and do the marketing for how hamburgers are sold under their brand. That's really what their, what their job is. And Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, all those car brands, that's exactly what their business model is. They write the rules and they do the marketing for how transactions should be processed under their brand. So when you think in, in that model, just like McDonald's has franchise owners, you know, here's kind of, I'm going to go over the, basically the structure of how the payment processing ecosystem works on some level. And there's, there's basically, there's two halves of the ecosystem. You've got on one side, the, what's called issuers. Those are guys who issue credit card accounts to consumers, right? That are making purchases and doing transactions. And then the other side is um, acquirers. And those are, they acquire relationships to process merchant, merchant account sales or credit card sales through. So those are the two halves of the industry. So, so we're primarily going to focus on the acquirer side. I'm going to give you that structure of that. But later on in our conversation, I'll tie into how it relates to the issuer side as well. So on the acquirer side, you've got, like I said, you've got McDonald's as the brand and they're kind of doing the marketing and writing the rules. And then below them, you've got, just like McDonald's has franchise owners, you have in the payment processing side, you have sponsor banks or uh, member banks, right? And so they're members of the, of the payment processing credit card associations, right? So this would be like the Chase's and the Bank of America and Wells Fargo and Fifth Third and all those, those banks. And the thing is, those banks, you know, they, they basically, Visa and MasterCard say you can do effectively anything that's legal and doesn't damage the brand and a few other rules that are kind of overarching rules. And then when you get down to the franchise owners, the, the banks, they're going to say, hey, we're cool with you doing anything that's legal, but we're going to be a little bit more strict. Maybe we don't like pornography. Maybe we don't like supplements. Maybe we don't like certain offer structures, um, you know, extended term. You know, there's certain risks that are yeah, out there that they're like, yeah, yeah, all kinds of different categories. Yeah. Um, there's a, a saying, um, every warning sign is written in somebody's blood. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, somebody uh, got, got slaughtered somewhere. And then now that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the new <laughs> Careful sharks, right? You know, and it's like, okay, don't go swimming here. Um, why? Because somebody got bitten by a shark and, you know, they died or whatever, right? So um, I, I kind of have a saying in payment processing, every restricted list is written in somebody's loss. And so banks are usually fine until they take a big fat loss. And then they're like, hell no, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> Completely move out of that category. And so that's what the member banks will do is they'll kind of, they'll get a little bit more narrow on what they'll take. And then below them, instead of having a store locations, you're going to have uh, payment processors. And these would be guys like PaySafe or Humboldt or um, Chase Payment Tech. It's a division of, pay, of Chase. Um, and so you'll, you'll have all these different basically store locations where a consumer can go to get a hamburger, or in this case, credit card services. And so one of those store locations would be Stripe or PayPal. Okay, similar business model, but a little bit different. I'll get into that in a, a second. But, but these are the store locations. And so the thing that I love about Cambridge Commerce and our role is that instead of going to the store where you walk into, you know, a location and you're like, hey, I'd like some credit card services. Give me some, you know, give me a hamburger here, right? A commodity. Um, you know, the guy at the counter is basically a sales rep, right? That's the guy taking your order, setting up your credit card services. And sometimes it's an automated system like Stripe where you just fill in your information online and boom, instant approval or decline or whatever, and away you go. Um, other times it's a guy who's, you know, talking to you, finding what you feel like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, what do you have, have that's new or whatever. And so then they'll give you a little bit more details about, you know, what's available and how to get it. And the role that we play at Cambridge Commerce is instead of just working at one store location, we act as a basically a, an independent sales agent that works at lots of different locations. And so if you want to get spam and eggs at a McDonald's, you can do it, but you can't just go anywhere to get it, right? There's certain locations you got to go to in Maui that'll help you, help you out. Or certain places, if you want noodles, you can go to pick up uh, you know, noodles at a certain location, but you can't get it everywhere at every location. And so the role that we play, it tends to be a little bit more consultative about what the needs are that clients looking for, how they're, how they're, their business is unique, if there's challenges, and really trying to help them find the best solution, the best tools, the best bank, the best technology to plug into that solution so that they can go not just to get what they're accomplishing right now, but then also to accomplish where, you know, they're trying to reach next three, five, 10 years. So that's kind of the role that we play. And so being in this role um, has allowed me to, to kind of run through some of these different solutions. So I'm going to talk about some of these profit boosting technologies or strategies that we've worked with the clients to implement. I'm going to talk through uh, cash flow and why it's still king. And I'm going to talk about smooth sailing 
meaning selling your business and what that looks like. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe and tell me what you thought about it in the comments. Your comments encourage me to continue posting videos and they give me ideas about what to post next. I read and reply to every single one. Also, if you own an online business and you're curious about how much it's worth, click the link below to get a free business valuation with a member of our team. Who knows, it may even be me you're talking to.